Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So we'll just continue this video from where we left in the last video. So we'll talk more about enzymes in this. We'll read about the enzyme immobilization and some of its techniques which are involved in the subject. So let's get started with this. So talking about enzyme mobilization, it's a very important topic when we talk about enzymes under bioprocess. So talking about immobilization, let's just uh, understand what it is basically. So it's the restriction of an enzyme mobility in a fixed place is known as enzyme immobilization. So it's basically restricting the enzyme movement in a particular space. That is, that is uh, in turn known as immobilization. So it has uh, lots of advantages. So that's why we are studying about these. And some of these are enzyme reutilization, uh, elimination of enzyme recovery, uh, easy purification process, better environment for enzyme activity, also product period is usually improved and effluent handling problems are minimized. So these are uh, around six advantages that I read out about enzyme mobilization. So moving on. So there are different techniques uh, under which uh, immobilization works. So talking about some more techniques uh, under immobilized soluble enzymes. So talking about soluble enzymes uh, in the first case, so there can be two methods such as entrapment and bound. So under entrapped or entrapment, we have these uh, which can be taken place through matrix entrapment or membrane entrapment. So entrapment takes place through matrix or membrane, whereas bound or bound to any physical or any sort of force is takes place through absorbed, which can be physical or ionic or which can be covalently bound. All right. So this is through absorbed or covalently bound. Also, uh, talking about, uh, you will talk about matrix entrapment in detail and how and what all are its stuff and how the gaps in it are maintained and how it is a better process than the others also. And talking about the membrane entrapment, so it has between microscopic membranes and micro, uh, and micro encapsulated. So it's like, it's pretty simple that uh, it has membranes that are pretty much small, but not that small also for the passage of molecules and covalently bond as we know. So it's an easy thing to understand. So these are covalently bond and this is by uh, physical or ionic bond. So let's just move on. Okay, so talking about some different techniques for enzyme mobilization. So uh, as you see, there are one, two, three, four, five different types of immobilization. So talking about the first type, which is the encapsulation. So encapsulation is basically, this is a semi-permeable membrane, as you see, it's labeled. And within, in the, within it or inside it, we have all the substances or the important enzyme particles. So basically it's encapsulated or protected within a shell. So the shell is the semi-permeable membrane where the inside material, as we know, is the enzymes. So talking about adsorption. So adsorption is the, it takes place through a support, which is very important. So we'll talk about supports also in which the enzymes get attached to or stuck to so that they get adsorbed to the support or the surface. And talking about entrapment. So now we read about encapsulation, which is a sort of a capsule in which inside we have the enzyme and the capsule is semi-permeable membrane. And entrapment, we have a sort of a matrix thing, which can be matrix entrapment also or membrane entrapment also. So it has uh, some sorts of crosses like this, as you can see on the screen, as you can see in this figure as well. So these is sort of a matrix or can be sort of some sort of membrane in which uh, enzymes are uh, filtered or stored. All right. And coming to this part, which is the covalent bonding, which is a very easy part as we know. So uh, the enzymes are covalently bound to the support. And this is the cross-linking part. So there are different cross-linking agents that favors this process or technique. All right, so we'll talk about this also. So these enzymes are cross-linked with each other so that they remain stable and together. So moving on with this. So let's just talk about entrapment, which is the first process that we studied. 
So talking about entrapment, it can be of two types, which can be matrix or membrane entrapment. So this is the matrix entrapment. This is the membrane entrapment. So as you can see the difference between the two. So matrix entrapment is uh, divided into number of squares. As you can see, we can see four squares here. One, two, three, four. And the membrane entrapment is pretty much circular and does not have any sort of squares or holes like this, but it is simply stored inside a semi-permeable membrane. So these, uh, this is the second most important point of the, uh, when we are studying about entrapment, which is the polymeric materials which are used for entrapment. So which can be calcium alginate for interest. So basically for entrapment or bringing in or trapping the enzymes into their web or into their squares or into their membrane, we need some sort of polymeric materials to keep to entrap the molecules inside it, which can be calcium alginate, agar, K catagenin, polyacrylamide or collagen. All right, so these are some of the five important substances which are the polymeric materials which help in the process of entrapment. So moving on with this. So let us talk more about entrapment and get the detailed understanding of this process. So the, uh, talk about matrix entrapment first and then we'll move to membrane entrapment. So talking about matrix entrapment, so matrix can be a particle, membrane or fiber. So membranes can act as a matrix, also particles or fibers can act as a matrix too. Also the enzyme solution is mixed with polymer solution before polymerization. So the enzyme solution is mixed with the polymer solution which can be any of the substances that I mentioned before, before polymerization, before the pouring into the, before getting attached to the web that has been set. So talking about membrane entrapment, so it has no, uh, no sort of squares in it. It is a simple uh, circular thing or semi-permeable membrane into which it gets stuck. So these are hollow fiber units uh, which have been used to entrap an enzyme solution between thin and semi-permeable membrane. All right. So in these membranes of nylon, cellulose, polysulfone uh, and polyacrylate are used. So these are some of the important uh, uh, substances or membranes that are used in membrane entrapment. So this is one more important point. So previously we discussed about matrix entrapment, which can be calcium alginate, polyacrylamide. And in this case, we in the in the membrane entrapment we have the nylon, cellulose, polysulfone, and polyacrylamide acrylate. So the semi-permeable membrane uh, has some of the features which favors this uh, membrane entrapment, which is it retains high molecular weight compounds which is enzyme which are definitely enzymes which are falling or getting entrapped into this and also diffusible by small molecular weight compounds so it's get so it gets diffused by small molecular weight compounds or gets displaced by small molecular weight compounds, which can be substrates of products and talking about one more entrapment process which is the micro encapsulation so micro encapsulation is another important process that we need to understand. So in gas, so we talked about entrapment, which are basically entrapping molecules. Encapsulation is just a similar process uh, as entrapment. It has no uh, sort of differences. So talking about micro, uh, uh, micro encapsulation, it's definitely a small uh, surface or area because it's micro, -encap uh, micro encapsulation. So in this technique, Microscopic hollow spheres are formed, very small hollow spheres are formed and membranes can be polymeric because polymeric is something that is uh, very important for attachment or form or yeah, something that gets attached to that membrane. So polymeric substances or interfacial phase formed around the micro drop. So this was about micro encapsulation. So moving on. So let's talk about some of its disadvantages. We previously talked about advantages. Uh, let's just talk about some of the disadvantages that it has. So it has uh, such as enzyme leakage into the solution. So enzyme is an enzyme that attract might leak into the solution. So limited diffusion, uh, diffusional limitations. So definitely it has limited, uh, it has a major drawback that it does not has limited diffusion uh, limitations. 
and has reduced enzyme activity may have reduced en enzyme activities due to the reacting substances which are polymeric in nature it has reduced stability that uh, yeah that that is a uh, that is another drawback and also lack of control of micro environmental conditions so this is a very important point so it's very difficult to maintain that sort of conditions and a bit alteration in the conditions may result in fatality so moving on uh, let's just talk about the surface immobilization so talking about adsorption the first process about surface mo uh, immobilization uh, would be so uh, under adsorption uh, we have the attachment of enzymes on the surfaces of support particles by weak physical forces such as van der Waals forces or dispersion forces or hydrogen bonding all right so basically these in this the there is a support material uh, to which the enzymes gets attached all right by weak forces which can be van der Waals or hydrogen bonding or dispersion forces any sort of dispersion forces and the adsorption of enzymes may be stabilized by cross linking with glutaraldehyde so we also studied about glutaraldehyde in the starting of the video so this is uh, this is one agent which helps in the cross linking which is glutaraldehyde so glutaraldehyde helps in the helps in forming uh, chains or cross linking chains uh, with enzymes so that the enzymes are together or together at once and are pretty much stable so that it can get a tag it can be attached to the support pa uh, particles easily under weak forces that's why cross linking agents are very important so that a bunch of enzymes can be attached also there are the support material that i told you so these are some of the details about sub support materials which can be inorganic organic or ion exchange resins so talking about inorganic materials which can be alumina silica porous glass ceramics diatomaceous earth clay bentonite and under organic materials we have cellulose cmc da cellulose some sort of cellulose starch activated carbon and under ionic exchange uh, uh, resins we have amberlite uh, cefadex and uh, doex so these are some of the support materials that help in the binding of enzymes to their material so let us keep this video till here i'll be continuing the video from here on uh, so thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for more